Hi, welcome to the last part, the second part in this tutorial on sketching quadratic curves. Now in the first part we looked at these two equations and I showed you how we based it on the transformations of the graph f of x equals x squared by completing the square. Now in the second part what is special is that instead of having x squared we've got a minus x squared term and in this example not only have we got just minus x squared but we've got a number also in front of the x squared. So I'll show you how to do these ones because they are just a little bit different to these ones here. Now if you're not sure about completing the square then go on my website and you will find that uh, there's a link to completing the square from the tutorial index or if you're viewing this on my website already you should see a link on this page. Okay let's start then with this first one y equals 2 minus 6x minus x squared. Well first of all we've got to complete the square and in the usual way what this comes out to be is y equals 11 minus x plus 3 all squared. Now this is different to what we've been doing previously because we based our graph on f of x equals x squared which was a u-shaped parabola but in these examples because we've got a negative x squared term what we're going to do is base our graph on y equals or f of x equals minus x squared. Now what does the base graph minus x squared look like? Well you should already know that it is a parabola but it's inverted, passing through the origin. So when it comes to building up this equation, what I now need to look at is f of x plus 3. So we build this part here. So if we write that in, we've got f of x plus 3 is now going to be the same as replacing that x here with x plus 3. So we're going to have minus x plus 3 all squared. So what does x plus 3 do to any graph? It translates it parallel to the x-axis but because it's plus 3 it moves it to the left three places. So we take this graph then and if we grab hold of it, okay, move it three places to the left, let's say to there, then this point here is going to be x equals minus 3. Let's just mark that in then as x equals minus 3. So pop that in there, minus 3. Now what do we do to the graph? Well, we see here that we're adding 11. So what I can do is add 11 to this. I can put it at the front if you like, 11 plus f of x plus 3. So that's going to give me 11 minus the x plus 3 all squared, this equation here. But because I'm adding 11 externally to this function here, what it does is it translates the graph 11 units parallel to the y-axis. It moves it upwards 11 units. So what I've got to do is then just take this graph and move it 11 units up. So if I do that, we move it up 11 units. But the question is, as it was for these ones, where does it cross the y-axis? And we do that by substituting x equals naught into either this equation or this one. And if you put x is naught into either one, you'll find you get 2. So we know that it doesn't cross down here, but it crosses at the point where y is 2, which is up here. So if we mark in that that point is 2, let's just put a 2 there, then what we need to do is take hold of the graph then and shift it up from down here 11 units but it's going to cross through the 2 on the y-axis. So what does that mean about the point at the top here? This is now a maximum turning point, unlike these, which were minimum turning points. So this point here 
will now be 3 units across to the left, negative 3. Remember we shifted the graph up, translated it 11 units, so it would have a y coordinate of 11. And as we did before, we want to find the equation of line of symmetry, which will be down through here. So if we mark that in, we've got the equation of the line of the symmetry is essentially x equals minus 3. All right. OK, now we're going to finally look at this one, where, as I said earlier, we've got a number in front of the minus x squared term, which changes it a little. OK, so we'll take this out. We need to complete the square then on this. And in the usual way, what we have is y equals, I'll leave it up to you to check this out. It turns out to be y equals 3 minus 2 bracket x minus 1 all squared. So we look at the base graph, f of x equals minus x squared, which we know is a graph that looks like this. OK, our graph of negative x squared. Now, what do we need to do? Well, we're looking at x minus 1 here. So we need to think of what the transformation of f of x minus 1 is going to do. Well, if f of x is minus x squared, then this gives us minus x minus 1 all squared. We're replacing the x with x minus 1. So this is going to translate the original minus x squared graph one unit to the right because we've got a minus 1 inside the bracket. So we need to take that graph and move it, say, one unit to the right. So we'll say it's there. Let's mark that point in then as x equals 1. All right. Now we've got this 2. This is what makes this one different from the earlier ones that we did. So what we're looking at now is multiplying f of x minus 1 with a 2. So if we put a 2 there, then what we're going to get is the 2 in here, minus 2 lots of x minus 1 all squared. So what happens when you put a 2 at the front? Well, what this represents is a stretch now of this graph parallel to the y-axis of scale factor 2. And this point on the x-axis always stays invariant. It doesn't move. So we've got to stretch this graph. And what that would mean is we get a graph looking something like this. All right. Well, we remove the other graph. OK. And so this is now the graph of y equals minus 2 bracket x minus 1 all squared. But what do we need to do next? Well, we need this 3. We're adding 3 on. So if I add 3 to this, either putting it on the end, OK, which I can do, or I could put it at the front. I'll put it on the end here, but nonetheless, it is the same as writing it here. I'm adding 3 to both sides, and I get 3 minus 2 bracket x minus 1 all squared the equation that we've got here. So what does the adding 3 do? Well, adding 3 to your function means that you translate it up 3 units. We also need to know where the graph crosses the y-axis. And we do that by putting x equals naught into here or here. And if we put x is naught in, we get that y equals 1. So we know that this graph crosses the y-axis then at 1. So let's just say that this point here is y equals 1. So I've just got to take the graph and shift it up by 3 units. So if we shift it up 3 units, making sure that it goes through the 1 on the y-axis, we're going to get something that possibly looks like that. OK? We've got a maximum turning point here. We need to put in the coordinates of that maximum turning point. So we shifted the graph one unit to the right, so it's going to be 1. And we pushed it up a total of 3 units. So it's going to be at 1, 3. Crossing the y-axis at 1. It's not drawn to scale, but that's not really the point. It's just to show you the shape and the key points that it passes through. 
we need to put the equation of the line of symmetry in. So that's going to be a line down through here going through the one on the x-axis. So the equation then of that line of symmetry is x equals 1. Alright, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial. And again, I hope you've been able to follow this and can use these methods in order to sketch any quadratic graph.